What is up guys, your boy Sekai here back with another video And today, we got some savage anime villain flexes Let's get it, baby Well then What do you think about the second one? Oh no, okay. Oh, oh the part Yo. that makes villain fights so amazing is the hype. The one moment that makes you question Facts. a hero's hopes for defeating his arch nemesis one day. Honestly speaking, I feel that in shonen anime, a lot of that hype's generated by a villain showing off his power. A mighty showcase of power. A flex, if you will. It's one of the most effective ways of building up the wall that you want your hero to eventually overcome. So with that said, we'll be spending today's list talking about some moments where the villains Jesus. flex their powers on the good guys. I won't be counting down this time because how can I rank these moments that are all as epic and despair inducing? I hate to hold you any longer. Why does it sound like Persona? Show on the road. This gotta be Bleach, bro. It's the time where. Oh, oh. Remember Aizen casually stopping Ichigo with a finger? I do. And it's the impetus for an amazing climax of what many believe to be Bleach's finest arc. Just after a grueling battle with Byakuya, Ichigo's completely spent. As a final obstacle in his quest to rescue Rukia, he has to get over Aizen. The same Aizen who, by the way, already one shotted Hitsugaya and defeated. Bro, he one shotted Toshiro? No, 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 no way, no way, no way. Okay, so I've never watched Bleach before, but to be able to stop somebody's sword with one finger and then to one shot somebody, bro, you got like one shot a powerful being. Sorry, uh, you got to be like the strongest, and I mean the strongest character bro like like no no it's it's crazy bro he has to be mad powerful defeated rangy prior to that now with him brandishing his new nifty bankai to do a combination attack with the barely alive rangy ichigo seems to do protagonist stuff and slash his way to a happy ending the setup's there the music's there so here we go only the music Stopped with one finger, eyes and stopped. He stopped the music. He effortlessly beats him and Renji. If the difference in power wasn't obvious before, well, it sure is now. And to add to the flexing, Eisen also effortlessly defeats another captain who comes after him. Fun fact. Aizen's so powerful that this is the last yeah. time the vocal version of Ichigo's theme plays in the anime. You hear multiple remixes of it, but for the original version of number one, this was it. Bro, he's so powerful he ended the first the, the first soundtrack for this man ichigo bro the vocal soundtrack too it has to be on this list as well bro. It may not be anywhere near the moment that allowed Demon Slayer's popularity to shoot through the moon, but early on, Danjiro has a pretty interesting encounter with Muzan, still in that famous Michael Jack. Bro, I was just about to say that. It's Michael Jackson. <laughs> that he's long since abandoned. They encounter each other on a crowded street, and a lot of us hold our breaths, thinking that the confrontation is near, only it never happened when Muzan created a demon out of a passerby to cause mayhem. Now, this is pretty interesting, as in contrast to the usual flexing, it's not a show of strength. However, it's a display of how on top of the situation Muzan is, and how easily he could spawn an army of monsters to do his bidding. He merely sees Danjiro as nothing more than a pest at this point, and this is as clear as a warning as he can give. It's just a preview of the strength he holds. Remember, he stands above the upper moons, and if the pillars are already having so much trouble with the moons, who knows what Muzan has in store for our protagonists. The final That's showdown what I'm saying, bro. will be a thing to look out for. Bro, this man Muzan is so powerful, he changed his gender, bro. Think about it. We continue with a classic Yu Yu Hakusho moment. Remember, Toguro destroying the construction site? <laughs> Bro, this man's kicking. Yes, I do remember that moment. Among the major villains in Yu Yu Hakusho, Doguro already had quite the intimidating presence. I mean, just look at this guy. A humongous beast Bro. of a demon who probably had muscles he, for days. I think, and wasn't he in um, Jump Force? Packing. But to further drive the point home, he completely levels the entire construction site, not with magical powers or anything like that but just his fists, his bare fists. And how much power of this did he use to accomplish the humongous feat? 60%. Yes, Only a little 60? over half of what he's capable of, and that's the result that we got from it. We let the destruction speak for itself, really. I really like this moment because it builds up the hype for their eventual showdown so much. Now, if that's what Doguro is capable with just a little over half of his power, how could Yusuke even have a chance? He's a dead man, and it's gonna take everything for him to even stand a sliver of a chance against this opponent. Whoa! 
He destroyed the whole top half and dropped it down on Yusuke, bro. What the heck, bro? How are you now, surviving that? Popular one. I bring you Pandora showing off her might. Jesus Christ, obliterated her. Shonen anime is rife with big villains flexing on the good guys, so I won't blame you if Pandora wasn't the first character to come to your mind when you first click this video. But her feat in the back. Re Zero flashback arc is no on, small bro. one. Want to talk about the most broken ability in anime? Well, maybe rewriting reality is a contender, but Pandora is more than happy to show it off in her back. Destroyed her. Amelia's flashback. And she's Fortuna back. and Goose tried to stop oh her, but they can only do so much. Despite Goose's act of sacrifice, which slowly opened up the path for him to become the better Goose that we all all know from season one they're all no match for the witch of vain glory who seems to be content on toying with them none of these small fry stand a chance oh, i gotta catch up to and zero Amelia and the plot to finally put an end to her run temporarily <laughs> oh my god she got destroyed one shot it how's that for a first half of the list before we keep going though i'd like to introduce you to today's sponsor express vpn now a lot right, of you bro. may have heard no, of vpn no, in your no, region no. com slash no. if there's a beat down that luffy wouldn't be forgetting anytime soon it's the one he suffered at the hands of crocodile yeah this fight was pretty bad bro and I mean, I mean, bad for Luffy. It, the fight wasn't bad in general. Like, like the, the fight was just bad for Luffy, bro. He was it's getting a destroyed. Sight that I still remember vividly to this day. Luffy's first battle against Crocodile is as ill-fated as it could possibly be, despite all the bravado he displayed in front of Vivi. The battle seems skewed towards Luffy at first, with our hero being a house of fire in unloading attacks on the Master of Sand. However, the momentum doesn't last long, as it's pretty obvious that as the battle rages on, Crocodile's completely in control. He might not be landing hits on Luffy, but in due time, the Straw Hats leader's luck will run out. And run out it did and with it came a beatdown of insane proportions crocodile finally decided that playtime's over and he verbally bro. breaks down luffy while he was playing with this man power. luffy he bro finishes the battle look at his leg bro his leg's gone hydrating his opponent and even the last dehydrated wind isn't enough and luffy gets left for dead after getting impaled mid talk this is one of the biggest defeats i've ever seen luffy suffer to that point and for sure it did yeah. leave a mark on me we really get a glimpse of how powerful yeah. crocodile was back then and it sure made me anticipate the eventual rematch between between the two crocodile was, was insanely strong bro next we have madara facing off uh -oh. against the shinobi alliance. black force energy pure black force energy You know he's bound to show up on the list somewhere. Mother that man went from walking to slowly starting to run, bro. To remember, oh, it's nah. also a big time flex of his powers. We all heard the murmur and had the hype everybody before about scared. this Uchiha ancestor and all, but this time he finally shows up to confirm all those bold claims about his might. What boo, more needs boo, to be said boo, about this boo, moment boo, besides it being boo. one of the strongest bro, final my man's villain debuts bowls. in the battle shown him? Yes, I intentionally used final villain bro, because he's this. the one who fits the bill the most as an end game enemy amongst the contenders. He's broken nah, as this hell, and he's not shy about showing it off. He then follows this up with some more insane feats that we love to see. The guy never stops flexing, even as he solos the Gargays after this moment. Very well. What will you do about the second one? Oh no, kid. Broken shonen villain galore continues with Utsuro. So many Sky has no eyes! Bro, this guy's not even he's not even moving. He's just walking if forward. Has Madara and Bleach has Aizen, Gintama has Utsuro. Utsuro has the honor of giving us one of the best final fights in shonen anime as seen in this other video of mine, but we all have to look back at humble beginnings. Ah, Utsuro is right up there in the gallery of most broken anime antagonists, and the decisive fight against him is basically a showcase of how insane this guy is. Gintoki gets stomped pretty easily, but then the Shinsen Gumi comes in and gets their ass kicked as well. Even Kamui and Umibos are no match for him. Is there anything stopping Utsuro at this point? Well, we know by the end of Gintama, but at that point, it did seem that all hope was lost. It felt like it would take a complete miracle to even scratch him, and that's how you can tell a villain has done some very successful flexing on the heroes. Jesus, man. <laughs> And then he regenerates? Of course, one of the most broken villains in anime makes an appearance. Well, how does Father display his godlike powers? 
make a second sun. Yeah, how is that not melting right? everything First, around him? Bro, demonstrates the plane he's at when he finally acquires his godlike powers. As someone who has complete control over the laws of physics and chemistry, he just showcases his power by doing the impossible. No longer trapped within the flask, Father proceeds to create a second sun in the palm of his hands. Yeah, there could be more uses for his newfound Alchemy power, but also a little else, gloating or flexing while seated atop your throne, right? It's all about sending a message, this is, you see. And the rules of the world, everything that humanity has come to know about the world we live in, no longer apply to Father. He quite literally has the world in the palm of his hands, and there's no better thing to do than to let everyone know it. That just shows how crazy powerful Father had become. I mean, is there anything Jesus. stopping him at this point? And then he gets another upgrade. Like, come on, bro. If anything, this told me to go watch those anime because this is insane, bro. I freaking love this, bro. I gotta go watch it. I got to.